Hello. My plan today is to give you a quick tour of four different library resources so you have an idea of how to find information for your research projects using our library webpage. We'll look at EBSCO, Gale, ProQuest, and then our library search interface. If you have questions, you can contact us in various ways. You use whichever way works best for you. All of, all of our options for library help are linked on the right side of our library webpage. If you haven't used our library page yet, it's easy to get there. From the Anoka Ramsey homepage, hover over the words student resources in the dark blue bar and click on library in the menu that drops down. Notice the contact information on the right. You can contact the library directly by phone or email at the top, or you can contact us individually. Email addresses are linked from our names. Our announcements, when we have them, will be posted right above the yellow library account button. Resources are grouped by type and contained in various sections on the library homepage. To find articles in our databases, Click on the bar labeled Scholarly Journals and Newspaper Databases to expand that section. We'll start with EBSCO. EBSCO is a vendor that provides access to multiple databases. If you're off campus when you access this, you'll be asked to log in with your star ID and password. Once you get there, you'll see a list of databases. You can scroll down the page to find the one you want, or use the hyperlink alphabet at the top to navigate down the list. For today's demo, I would click on E to take me down to the section where EBSCO Megafile can be found. EBSCO will provide a description for the contents of each database to help you select the appropriate one for your needs. EBSCO Megafile is a great choice for communication studies as there are over 100 journals related to communication. Click on the hyperlinked title to go to the search page. You'll see a general search box with various search option links below it. You can use this for a keyword search. Start by using broad keywords related to your topic. After typing in your search terms, you can use the tools on this page to either increase or decrease the number of results from your search. Using the word and between each of your search terms will ensure that all of your search terms are included in the search. If you want more results, use the options in the Expanders section. To get fewer results, use the Limit Your Results section. I usually start with these three. I click the full text checkbox to ensure that I can see the complete article. Check the Peer Reviewed Journals checkbox to eliminate any results that do not come from scholarly journals. And put a start year in to eliminate older results. If you only want articles from the last 10 years, for example, you could type 2014 in the Start Year box. Underneath each article in your results list, you may see either a link to request the article or a link to access the full text article. If you did not check the full text box, you will see both of these. If you checked the full text box, you probably won't see the ones that say link to request full text. Notice you can also see all the subject terms that have been assigned to each article. Sometimes you can use those for more keywords for your search. Finally, if you click on the title of an article, you'll see a detailed record that tells you more about that article. In the center section, you'll find information about the authors, the source or the journal title, uh, the subject terms, and the abstract, which is a short synopsis of the article. Anything that's hyperlinked in blue will take you to a page with more information about that piece of information. So for example, if you click on the hyperlinked journal title or source, you'll see information about the journal, including if it's peer reviewed or not. So you would see something like this about it. And on this one, you, you can see that yes, it is peer reviewed. On the right, under Tools, you'll find a list of options for the citation for the article. In the section to the left, you'll see the link to the full text of the article or a link to request the full text if you didn't eliminate those in the beginning. 
Clicking the link that says PDF full text will take you to a PDF of the article. You'll see the options for working with it, including downloading and printing up at the top. If you have trouble printing the article, try downloading it to your desktop and opening it with Adobe Reader from there. You will see that icons for your citation options are still on the right. If this is an article that you want to keep and use for your research, I recommend that you email it to yourself along with the citation. And you can do that by clicking the email link, which is the icon that looks like an envelope. When you do that, you get the option of including the PDF as an article, uh, PDF of the article as an attachment to the email if, you, if they have it. And this prevents having to go back to search for the article later to get the citation. So once you've clicked that little envelope icon, I would type in your email. It doesn't have to be your school email. It can be any email that you want it sent to. Make sure the box is checked that says PDF is separate attachment, if it's there. Select your citation format here and click Send. You should receive an email with the citation and the article attached. Remember to check the formatting of the text and the layout of the citation after you copy it to your reference page. You may need to double space it and format the hanging indent. EBSCO will tell you as well that you need to um, check the formatting on your citation because these citations are computer generated. And although they will likely have the correct information about the article that you're looking at, you'll still need to verify that the formatting is aligned with what your instructor is looking for. A slightly different process is used to access an article that we don't subscribe to. You will need to request the full text and it will be, it will be emailed to your student email address. Click the words, link to request full text that you should see in the top left corner. Once you click that, it will take you to the article in our library search catalog. You'll need to sign into your library account to make sure the system knows where to send the article. Click the link to sign in. Click the star ID option on the next screen and sign in with your star ID and password. After you're logged in, you'll see that that sign in has changed and you can request it via interlibrary loan. On the next screen, the information about the article should populate the fields automatically. Scroll down to the bottom, verify your email address, making sure that your information is accurate. Click to agree to the copyright restrictions and click send request. Your article should be emailed to you within a day or two. If you don't see it in your email, please check your junk mail. Sometimes it gets directed there. And then that's it. That's all you need to do for that. Let's move on to Gale. Gale will also be found in the same section of scholarly journals and newspaper databases. The link for Gale will be about halfway down that list, just below EBSCO. And we'll be using one in particular here, Opposing Viewpoints. Not only is there a long list of different potential topics in opposing viewpoints, there's a useful tool called the Topic Finder in Gale. I'll briefly show you how to use this. It's especially nice if you're brainstorming for a topic and you would just want to find some ideas. After clicking the link that says opposing viewpoints, you should see a window something like this. Current issues of interest will be on that landing page both in a banner that kind of scrolls back and forth and a few selected issues below that. And they change over time as Gale updates them. But if you want to browse through the entire list of topics, you can use the Browse Issues link up at the top. This will display a list of many various issues on which Opposing Viewpoints has reported. Going through the list could possibly trigger some ideas for you. And then clicking on an issue will take you to a window that has links to many different kinds of sources that are related to that. So for example, if I click advertising, you'll see an overview of the topic, as well as the types and numbers of sources that are linked from here in that box below. You can find these by paging down, or you can click the hyperlinks to jump to each section. So here, if you clicked on academic journals, 
you would be able to page through over 1,600 articles that are related to advertising. So near the top, you should see a link for the topic finder. This is a fun little way to generate more ideas of related topics and see what kinds of keywords are being used for research. You click on that link. This should generate a grid of tiles that are have words in them that are related to the topic that you are looking at, and they break it down into more specific categories. And you can look at this two ways. You could click on each one of those sections and see the expanded list in there, or you could click the button to look at them in a wheel format. Here you can see the same information in a wheel format. This kind of makes more sense to my brain, but you can use either one. I clicked in a section titled Claims, which brought up related articles in a list on the right. And these titles are also hyperlinked, so you can click on any of them to get more information about the article or read, print, email, download the article, whatever you want. Again, clicking on the title will bring up the article. Notice the section to the right titled more like this, where you'll see related articles and subjects. You can see options at the top of the article and at the top of the page for downloading, printing, emailing, and citing. And they work similarly to EBSCO. They're just, they just look a little different. Clicking on the citation format you need um, will give you um, a citation for that article. You can copy and paste it. If you click select, then you highlight it, and then you can copy and paste it. And Gail also provides a disclaimer about the format of the citation, warning you to double check to ensure the correct format. All right, uh, we are moving on to ProQuest. ProQuest is another uh, vendor that has several databases that we subscribe to. It's another useful tool for finding articles. And since it looks at newspapers as well as journals, you may find some different results in here. And ProQuest is all the way at the bottom of that database list. So if you click that, it should take you to a window like this. You could just do a general search, a basic search with those same search terms, or you could select one specific format like scholarly journals and eliminate everything else that they would provide. So if you type in a keyword phrase and click that search icon, you'd probably see something like this. However, as you can see, you're likely to find lots and lots of unfiltered results, even though they're sorted by relevance. There's way too many to look through individually. I would suggest clicking the modify search link to go back to that search window. Here are some options. This time I clicked on advanced search, which is right above. And these are the limiters that I use to narrow my search. I use quotation marks around the phrases, so it would look for those words together in that order. I separated my keywords and phrases into separate search boxes. I selected the full text option and an option for peer reviewed journals. And finally, I used a more specific date range. So you can see these limiters are very similar to what we used in the EBSCO search. That reduces your number of results significantly, but there are still too many to go through individually. If you're not finding what you want right away, I would suggest using some more of our tools. One way is to use the subject section. You'll see this option in the left sidebar. And if you click on the word more at the bottom of the list of subjects, that will bring up a box listing all the subjects these articles were tagged with. You can look through the list to see if any of them relate to your topic. You can also use the checkboxes to include or exclude the topics as needed. For example, it looks like a lot of the articles in my results are related to COVID-19. If that's not what you're focusing on, you could click the exclude checkbox to eliminate those articles from your results. And again, in ProQuest, clicking on an article title will give you more information about that article. Here you can see the related information is hyperlinked underneath the title. Citation and sharing tools are in the top right. And on the left, you can toggle between the full text options and the abstract and details. Okay, we're almost there. We're gonna move on to library search. 
This option will allow you to search through all of the physical items in the library, like print books and DVDs and items in other college libraries as well. Click the books, DVDs, and CDs div section to expand it and click the yellow library search button. This will take you to our main library search page. You can choose if you want to search everything we have access to, including online resources, or you can just choose what's physically in the library. There's an advanced search option just to the right of the search box, which is especially useful to help you narrow that down. If you select that, the search box should then look like this. Hopefully, the more you use these various search tools, the more you'll see the similarities. Most of the techniques I'm showing you transfer from one to the other. Here again, I used quotation marks around the phrases. I used a similar search looking for articles about social media and mental health that have been published since 2014. Notice the top line has both the libraries and online resources selected. That means it will be looking for journal articles online as well as books in the library. You could change that here and select one of the library options, or you could also change that on the next screen. I left it on the default search, which looks for everything we can access, but you can see there are too many results to page through efficiently. If you look at the left sidebar, you'll see an example of how you can adjust your search at this point. If you hover over the option that says held by library in the sidebar, you see a checkbox option on either side. If you check the gray box on the left, you will see only the books and items from the library. But to exclude those, you would check the red box on the right side. But honestly, if you have an idea of your topic and you want to start with library search, you might be able to save some time and effort by starting here since it will search the print books, videos, databases, journals, and online content. So there's not a wrong way to search. There's just options. So I went ahead and checked the box on the left so I could look at only the physical items that we have in our libraries. It's a very efficient method to weed out unwanted results quickly. You can see we're down to six results. And again, click on a title to learn more about a book that you're looking at. Our print books will have a call number, which will be found on a label on the spine of the book. It's like an address to help you find it in the library. And we're happy to help you locate your items if you have any trouble finding them. Here you can see the location of this item is at the Cambridge Campus Library. So if you're on the Rapids campus, you would need to sign in to request it. If you're at the Cambridge campus, you can go find that section and look for that call number. After you sign in, if you wanted to request it, you should see the option to request the item from the other campus. Click the link, and then you'll receive an email when the item is ready to pick up at the service desk. So easy. All right. I know that was a lot of information in a short time. If you need a refresher when you go to use one of these resources, check the library video tutorials section on our website or contact someone from the library for more help. Thanks for your time and attention.